Are you ready for this week's UK official top 10? You better be. Yeah, <laughs> it's the 23rd of March. We're not live, but I'm Dan Whittle, and this is the Cacophony Sessions Goes Pop with my co pilot, Alex. Hello, everyone. I feel like we need some air horns for this thing. <laughs> 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 it's the podcast of what we're waiting for in video format with less information and we're just going to be a bit more casual a bit more breezy and we're going to talk you through the uk top 10 because now that changes yeah on a friday when did the charts start changing on a friday it used to be on a sunday right i want to say it was a sunday but I don't know. I don't. This problem is I don't listen to the radio like ever. No, I mean, like no. so, I would not be able to tell you. I could not like all of these artists. I know some of them just because they're famous as hell, and I, my Facebook feed it gets put up with the usual stuff they've been up to. Usually controversial, probably like Kanye wearing a purple coat or something. Okay. And I, for some reason, need to hear about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these these artists are all pretty new to me. I've got I've done my research. I've got pages to flip on my notes usually quite negative because i'm a bit of a grumpy git but i'm quite looking forward to discussing some of these people mm. not in depth because that's not my forte you know it's just metal i'm pretty or punk music i'm pretty fucked when it comes to the general knowledge but <laughs> we're here for the every man's opinion yeah <laughs> yeah i don't think there's going to be much of that to be found let's see who's popular what's down with the kids these days if you want to check out all our old episodes go to www.cacophonysessions.com we can find all the more long-form podcast episodes as well as all the video episodes that we're putting out unfortunately you won't be able to find the cacophony sessions meets jill jones anymore due to internet controversy i've taken that down because jill's management did message me and say that she feared for her well-being so if you had anything to do with that just behave right? what that's ridiculous because yeah. i did listen to a bit of that and I, I did look at the internet comments and all it was was just how dare she say prince was a dick yeah but why can't he be a control freak dick that's his entire personality there's exactly. no fucking new news yeah exactly as a prince fan i can manage the fact that prince wasn't always a hundred percent an amazing person and in fact probably sometimes was pretty shitty to people that he was around and and that's probably how he maintained his own control within the industry exactly like no one got onto fucking michael jordan for the last dance <laughs> when it just turns out he was a complete dick yeah. but in a great way well, I... people are just too parasocial they just become obsessed with the person it destroys their ego if they hear something that they can't handle about them that's ridiculous, isn't it? I, I, I actually listened to the Scotty. Did you have you seen the last dance? I um, haven't. Michael I haven't seen it. As a vertically challenged man, I try and stay away from anything basketball related, you know? I'm not the biggest basketball fan, but it was quite good. But I actually read his second in command, Scotty Pippen, had an audio book of his biography, and he basically slagged off the entire documentary saying, I wasn't even friends with Michael. We were great without him. Fuck him. <laughs> I was like, oh, this bit of a tangent but i guarantee his management didn't get shit mm. but i don't know <laughs> anyway doesn't matter <laughs> yeah so uh, i mean if you do want to engage with this video please make sure that you like subscribe and leave us a comment below but if you're going to be a parasocial dick about somebody then probably leave it all right if someone's going to complain about me in comments trust me i already self-love enough for both of us <laughs> so don't worry about it i don't need extra yeah, <laughs> just say how handsome I'm looking. That'd be nice. Yeah, my wardrobe speaks for itself, whether you like it or not. I don't really care. But you might want to just subscribe for the bell end thumbnails that we'll be producing. Should we have a go at uh, doing one on a live basis? If you could sum up the chart this week before we get into it, uh, so this might be a spoiler, I guess. But if you could sum up the chart just using a facial expression, what would it be this week? I think my facial expression to the chart this week would be. What's the facial expression you can do for it seems quite mum friendly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what is my Mother's Day face? What what face would I put on for Mother's Day to go and see my mum? Yeah. I didn't see my mum on Mother's Day. I waited till two days after, but you know me. I'm a maverick. Um, 
I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I it's, a start. <laughs> it's a start. We're going to have to practice our own like... spelling thumbnails, yeah. Yeah, I'll reveal why yeah. uh, over the course of the episode. The playlist is also available, so as I mentioned, go to cacophonysessions.com. I've made the playlist on Apple Music and Spotify. Give us a listen. It might be best for you to pause between each one. I think that's the best way to do this. But don't pause and forget to come back to us, because, I mean, you'll miss the episode. Like, definitely, because, uh, let's be honest, we're probably going to pause and get just to double check yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Uh, everyone can do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll start with number 10. It's his first appearance in the UK top 10. American singer Michael Markagi in at number 10 with the song Scared to Start. This is a folk singer-songwriter entry. It's not really my bag. Al, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably not really your bag either. <laughs> I notoriously loathe singer songwriters mm. this is mum music yes. this is what i'm this is what, exactly what i mean this is mum music it's just i feel like there's such a wet blanket style of music isn't it mm. oh, there's another one here which is very similar where it's just i think i'm fed up with men singing about missing someone or being dumped or just in general just be like oh i got broke up with or i love you so much and it's just so boring and just if uh, it's for women because if for me it panders to what women want out of a male musician mm. rather than what men would like out of a male singer songwriter like all these songs about getting dumped they're always like oh, i wish i had you back or oh, i'm so sad and i still think about you and all that stuff for most people who have gone through a bad breakup like a lot of the time and because most men would be like you know what i've got my freedom back this rules like, they need a song about, I've got so much more hobby time. <laughs> I'm going out with the boys and I can get really smashed without judgment. <laughs> there needs to be an equivalent because, like, how many female singers where all the songs are about being empowered? I don't need my man. You've been kicked to the curb. Mm. That, that's the general consensus with female vocalists at the moment. It's just men ain't shit. We don't even need them. Whilst every fucking male singer songwriter is, I can't live without them. And it's really irritating to me after a while. Because let's be honest, if you got dumped, it's probably because you're a bit of a dick or, and it wasn't working out anyway. So just fucking be happy with it. Oh, it just, it drives me insane. Just, I've got so much more time to just wake up at 11 in the morning. <laughs> There's something that really irks me about it. I have friends, and most of them are in relationships. The amount of times we just fucking message them or whinging about them sometimes. There must be like, don't get me wrong, there's going to be 80% ups, eighty percent of you is just really upset because being dumped sucks. Mm. I don't know, I'm still batting 100. I've never been dumped. God knows how. But come on, sometimes it's, I've been in a relationship for like 12 years. Sometimes I go, oh, wouldn't it be nice to be single just for a six-month period? <laughs> just to get all of my procrastination and hobby time in. <laughs> Sing the song about that. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, and, now here's, fucking and now here's Michael <laughs> Markagi with his new song, Now I Have Time to Paint Warhammer Again. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> Look, we all love our girlfriends and that, but come on, they can come up with annoying things. They'd be like, oh, do you think we need to paint the hallway? <laughs> Men don't do that stuff. And we always go, yeah, I guess we could. And then we spend our weekend doing that shit. Sometimes you just go, oh, have you ever had a week girlfriend's gone away for a few days? Yeah. You love it, don't you? Oh, <laughs> not, yeah. not because you dislike them, oh, yeah. but it's just because you can just, it's just all the little things like, what do you want for dinner tonight? Oh, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah decisions. I'm having Popeye's chicken. Yeah. yeah. I take takeaway three times this week. <laughs> no, no, this day, you know, <laughs> like it's no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My IBS is, is really flaring up, but it feels damn good and I'm on my own. So it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, like there should be a song. There should be a song called "My Girlfriend's Away." Oh, I'm whacking on the couch. <laughs> I'm whacking in the front room. I'm, you know, I <laughs> like, like, you know, yeah. There needs to be some welcome to I'm, the I'm house song. Wrong. Funk. <laughs> yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I would be devastated if my girlfriend left me. But I wouldn't write a song about it. It's just have some dignity, guys. Fucking hell! What happened to just quiet upset? What happened to that? Just how are you doing, mate? <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm I'm pretty good. Uh, yeah. A bit upset? No, I'm all right. I only get really bummed out when I'm just staring at the ceiling in bed. That should be a song. It's not the worst song I've ever heard. I'll get, I'll get that out of there now. I mean, it's competent. But the problem I have with, there's so many of these songs, and there have been probably in the last sort of 15 years, where it's like a, an audition to be doing the John Lewis Christmas advert. You, you've got a very 
managed audience for this kind of song you're right it's mum music and I, it just never appeals to me the kind of singing the, the earnest lyrics it, it's fine we're recording this the morning after the chart has been announced and there isn't much time to really f discover this artist within less than 24 hours so I, I don't know if I mean it's from an EP American Romance I believe that's his only EP that he's got out, so he's a brand new artist. There's not really much that I can discern from the information that's out there, other, other than this is being presented as somebody else who makes nice singer songwriter uh, music. It's pleasant enough. Yeah. Like when I heard it for the first time, I felt like I'd heard it already. Mm. Like everything, the music, his, his the cape, like his vocals, they're not unique in any way. He's not bad vocalist, yeah, he's all right, I'm but. It's, there's nothing wrong with this song. I will say that now. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's, to quote Anna Partridge, it's rather moribund. Isn't it? It's just, <laughs> yeah. It's all right. It's all right. It's not bad. Like, I, I actually get surprised when these reach like top 10. Mm. So I think, who's buying it? Yeah. Who just goes, that is, that's the song. That's the guy I'm following now. I'll buy the next five. Yeah, it's all right. I think for me personally, with these, with artists like this, who, as I've ranted about, the, the lyrical content is I just don't believe them. Mm. I think they write what they think they should write about for a sad love song. Mm. I just don't believe they feel these feelings half the time. No, I just don't believe. Them. Yeah. I, I, it's very methodical in the way that it's been released. I imagine. And it, the A and R guys at the label have picked this song to be the single. Uh, it, it, it's very calculated. It's not necessarily the raw talent that's got it into the top 10 for sure. Do we really need another one of these songs? N no. Are they going to stop making them? No. They're really popular at the moment as well. Yeah. Moment, but the last couple of years, I don't think this will make it into the US top 10. Um, this seems to be very much a British thing. I've, I think we've done a few top 10s in the past with the old format cacophony sessions. Mm. And we have done the UK one, and I think we did the US one another time. Yeah. But it's very, it, it's the same with Lewis Capaldi and a lot of stuff like that. That's a very much a UK thing at the moment. Mm. I think Mum Rock is on the up, it seems. Mm. And it's definitely firmly in Mum Rock. Yeah. And I don't, the Americans don't give a shit about Mum Rock. I know they might have a bit of Ed Sheeran, but he's a global sensation. Yeah. The world wriggly. There's only one UK artist in this entire top 10. The rest of it is American, so for whatever reason, maybe Mum Rock is really popular in America at the moment. Oh, maybe, maybe it is. Uh, I, as we've stated, I am incredibly ill-informed on all of this. <laughs> or Which we wouldn't have any other way. But yeah, overall, I would give this song a 5 out of 10. Oh, we're rating it. Uh, uh, I just thought, it's, it's okay. It's, it's just, it's not bad. It's just bland, isn't it? Yeah. And I hope this guy manages to sell out stadiums south, you know, on his acoustic little guitar, singing about how depressed he is whilst he makes millions. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> that song's been on the charts for 10 weeks. Last week it was at number 14, and it's replaced Taylor Swift at number 10. He's obviously doing something right. I don't really hear it. I actually prefer the Taylor Swift song, Cool Summer, we listened to when we were going to do this last week, but that's not particularly remarkable, and I was disappointed it isn't a Banana Rama cover. <laughs> but in the I, f I find a lot of the time, because especially when you're going through the list of the, like when you sent me the playlist yesterday for me to listen to, like you look at the artists in it, and sometimes I don't think the songs need to be good. They just need to be that artist. Yeah. And it's in the oh, there's a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, it's good to see someone get their first top 10. Michael Markagi, I don't know anything about him, as I said. I know he's from Ohio, he's American. This is his first UK top 10. Good for him. Probably not going to buy the album, though. So, yeah, sorry. Maybe release something different and you'll get the cacophony sessions on board. Wouldn't hold your breath. So what do you reckon? Thumbs up or thumbs I'm down? I'm going to give it a, a thumbs none. No, a numb thumb. Okay, give it a I'm giving it a numb thumb. Because I can't, I, I'm not rating it. I'm sat on my hands. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Probably, it's, it's all right. probably get a better scoring system in, in the coming weeks. In at number nine, this is the only entry by a, a British artist. It's been on the chart for five weeks. Peaked at number four. It's dropped to now at number nine. This is Dua Lipa with Training Season, which I think is a banger. I this personally, two thumbs up for me. This is two thumbs up from me. Mm -hmm. This is, for me personally, I find this easily the strongest on the list. It's my second. And I, was like, I, I didn't know she was from the UK until just now. Yeah. So I'm not biased. I really like this song. It's for me, it's what a good pop song should be. Yeah. The music 
underneath it, it's really great. And I, I think that it's got easily the strongest chorus yeah. of anything in this chart. I, um, yeah, but I, I like I how it's upbeat it. and it goes down and it's just thumping mm. all the time, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's the so, sort of disco stuff that we were praising from Jesse Ware uh, at the end of last year. It's good to see Dua Lipa back. It's taken her four years. We reviewed one of her albums for album of the year in 2020. We've been doing it that long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in 2020, she released Future Nostalgia, which was one of my favorite records that year. It is an album that I've gone back to a few times. It's good. It's not, it doesn't quite have the impact that it did four years ago for me, but Levitating still played a lot. Don't Start Now. There's some really good tunes on that. I, I'm excited for her new album, which is Radical Op Optimism. It's out in May. And this is the second single from it. The first single was Houdini, which is also a banger. There's something about her. She's got charisma or riz, if we want to be down with the children. Don't tell me that's what charisma is now referred to as. Is that a real thing? Yeah. You didn't make that No, up. I don't make the rules. I just live by them. Oh. I, I don't mind. I, I don't mind. Riz is fine. I don't mind a few new, new sayings, which I just don't get as a creeping up to 36 year old man <laughs> like i still like the term drip that's pretty good yeah Some, it's, it's, I, I like that but hey yeah. the song i really like when the chorus because it's quite upbeat in the verse and it's still upbeat in the chorus but they make the music a bit simpler to really punctuate just the beat in the chorus mm. and yeah i think that's really great and it seamlessly goes back into the verse which is a bit more upbeat i just yeah this song's it's good it's a good one like a lot of these songs i've come round to after a few listens but this one really it's instantly thought yeah this is just a good pop yeah. song i can imagine this playing in a club and people dancing yeah which is fine which is what you want i, I would give this definitely yeah definitely yeah exactly that's what you want it's a nice lane if it doesn't out overstay it's welcome which to be fair the last song we just discussed it was a bit short actually wasn't it yeah that was yeah that two was minutes 40 point. this one's three three twenty nine they're all fairly concise pop songs in this top 10 yeah. This is one of my favorites. I think it's my second favorite on the list. Not quite my favorite album that's coming up in a moment, but this one, I mean, ABBA are back in vogue at the moment. Everyone is going to see that ABBA thing in London. I'm not really interested in seeing holograms, but yeah, this. I mean, the prices they charge for that is. Yeah, no, I'm not interested in that, but we're not talking about ABBA. Dua Lipa is, she's got that Voulez Vous 70s disco vibe. Uh, which suits her. Is this in the US top 10, this song? Is she uh, transatlantic? It got to number 27 in the US, so not the biggest hit in the US, so shame on you, America. It always surprises me when the UK gets it right, because it doesn't do that very often. I think the Americans get swamped with a lot more just trap music and just stuff that just doesn't quite translate in popularity over here. It is what it is. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> but yeah, good song overall. Thumbs up. Uh, I'd listen to more of her if I wasn't too busy listening to music of genres I really enjoy. <laughs> I imagine if the album is anything like the two singles so far, Radical Optimism will maybe be in my top three by the end of the year. So you might have to listen to the album. Oh yeah, this is cool. Whittle written all over it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next up, God, I've got to talk about him again. So I talked about him on CAC News and, and this is fucking Kanye West and Ty Dolskine <laughs> featuring Playboy Carty and Rich the Kid. Carnival. It's been on the chart for six weeks. It peaked at number five. It was at number eight last week. It's at number eight again this week. And please stop fucking buying it, you morons. Like, it's absolute <laughs> trash. The lyrical performance is, is shoddy. The lyrics themselves are woeful. The production is lazy. And, and, and to top it all off, he just gets a load of racist football fans. And that's not just an indictment of football fans in general. Most of them are lovely people. But these are the, the Inter Milan ultras. So they're known for being violent football thugs that pride themselves in, in racist chants and things like that. And he's put them on a record. Was that who they were? Was that who it was? I just seem like just some group vocals so did I. I just... uh, the, uh, when, uh, very f uh, the first time I listened to it, I thought, oh, he thinks it's 2010 again, and he's just doing that. <laughs> that's fucking sucked in the 2010s. <laughs> 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 but no, it's not even the good type of like house music. Like the, the, the Usher fucking shit that came out. Oh my God. And Will I Am, all that kind of. I'm Britney, bitch. That kind of woeful dance pop that came out in the early 2010s he's doing that but he's not content to just do that he has to add his ultra spicy racist piece of shit ass bigotry all over it as well what a dickhead what an i don't know man like he 
I, uh, for me, he gets a free pound. I mean, just heard that's now a thing. I didn't know that at all. Like in my head, he gets a free pass just because one, like I really doubt he even knew that they were. Oh, there. he does. No, he know he knows. Oh, he, he, well, and, and my second point was because he's literally crazy. And, he's not right in the end. Yeah. Like I just, yeah. he's just. I can't. I have a hard time judging someone for doing shit like this when they are obviously not mentally well. Yeah. Did you listen to him on the Joe Rogan podcast? I haven't listened to that specific it's, one. But. It, might, it might have been a while back now, but I've had friends that have had mental breakdowns and just the way he talks and the, the way it's, he is just so gone in the head. I don't know if he's coming back. He's always been like that. It's always that famous clip of him and Michael Myers, wasn't it, where they're talking about them. Yeah, the Katrina <laughs> like, like, thing. Yeah, George Bush hates black yeah. people. I'm watching my like, eyes just look uncomfortable. And I'd love it. Like, he's always been mad. Him but... now that it's at the point where I just want to see somebody on TV just disregard what he says and goes, Kanye West hates black people. Like, because that would be appropriate. He's, he I mean, has, he's, he's, wild. he's lost his mind. But the problem is he's now doubling down on it and surrounding himself by people that don't care about whether he gets better or not. So he won't get better. He's just surrounding himself with the worst possible people. And and the reason why he knows that they are like a racist football, a racist football thugs is because he's become obsessed doing research like Nazi history and the history of racism because he thinks it's cool. So like he he thinks like, you know, like, <laughs> really? he was on Alex Jones, right? Who is a an, a, oh, an actual nutter by court order is just insane. And Kanye West went on his show and said, no, I am a Nazi. And Alex Jones said to him, no, I don't think you mean that, do you? You, you, you try to give him an out. Alex Jones, certified nut job. Gay tried to give him that, and he went, "No, no, no. I, I do think Hitler is is a was a good person." And, and, and at that point, I'm just like, "You don't really deserve an opinion. Just go away." I don't think you'd have fared well during the Holocaust. Yeah. To be fair, well, no, no, <laughs> he, yeah, exactly. I mean, he's simping for the people that would have had him killed. But I promise, the people just say he's a genius. They just he's not a genius. I I remember when Kanye Fogg was kind of first on the scene. We're talking like what 15 years? Yeah. How old were we? I mean, when he not, was not, it, it wasn't bad. 2004. But I just. I don't get it. I just don't like a lot of his songs are fine, but yes, but, I don't understand where this genius thing. I know he said it enough about people. Yeah, yeah, so I know he doesn't say it because he just believes yeah, it. Yeah, that's what it is. I think people tell him it as well, yeah. surely. Yeah, he's surrounded by sycophants, and uh, at this point, his fans have very little music to cling to, so they're just cling to sound bites that he's offered up over the years. It, you can't really talk genius territory. His, his consistency isn't, uh, he's got about uh, what? nine or ten albums and i'd say five of them are really good maybe two of them are, are, are like above a seven uh, but this one the, the latest album is 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 bordering on a zero and oh wow yeah it, it, it's just really lazy and it's just made to be it's almost like it's made by ai and he's just put in chat gpt can you make me a kanye west album that's just really controversial well we've heard your opinion on this song we should probably listen to mine I don't hate it. How? I don't. Don't get me wrong. When I first heard it, I loathed it. I was like, this is complete trash. And it, I still think it is complete trash. But I, I'm, unfortunately, because I like to listen to a song a few times over, just because I know I'm like, I'll just get it instantly. And I need to talk about this now. But uh, the first couple of times I was like, this is absolute trash. The lyrics are the most stopped lyrics I can think of I've ever He's heard. He's simply putting Elon Musk in there as well. Yeah, he told oh yeah. Give me some money, Elon, please. Yeah, okay, so let, let's go down the list of stock lyrics we usually get in most rappers from America at the moment. Mm. They mention Gucci a lot for some reason, because yeah. it's expensive yeah. and they, they're obsessed with it now. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Yes, there's a list of expensive things. So, so what? Branston's beans, Kanye. Right? Yeah. I don't know how you say it about that. I ordered, my, my, I ordered takeaway from Deliveroo. <laughs> that pays <laughs> <credit> <laughs> charge. <laughs> that makes me cool. <laughs> I drive a Hummer because it only gets two miles a gallon. But uh, they, I've noticed there's just a lot of mention of Gucci. Like this, the, I mean, who's the artist actually had a song that's called Gucci or something? Oh, or, there's a record called Gucci something, uh, isn't there? There was that Gucci main song. That's the one, yeah, and yeah. Gucci yeah, like, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, which, yeah, I hated it at first, but it grew on me. And yeah, unfortunately, it's anything to be a meme song. Stuff. It's supposed to be a meme song. But yeah. But yeah, the lyrics are so dumb. And yes, and the usual down the list of, yes, you're rich. That's very nice. Mm. We understand you're rich because idiots buy your music. 
yes, the usual over the top sexism, which is usually fine in rap, but even this one, I was there, like, they stopped short of, oh, I'm going to fuck you in the ass, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. He goes, in the A. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. We get it. Yeah. So now, is that you're dominating women now? Yeah. Good, good for you. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just bad. Just crap pop culture references. Oh, yeah. And Elon Musk, brilliant. Yeah. We all know who he is. But after the 10th listen, I'm going, <laughs> I'm not going to suck a dig like carnival. I'm like, yeah, it didn't, it was like, annoyingly, the hook isn't that bad. Uh, it's trash. The lyrics are terrible. But I don't know, to man. give something a hook, it doesn't need to be good, I guess. But it it uh, wasn't that bad. I mean, he, but, but he just comes across to me. I can't listen to Kanye West, especially when he's like this, without thinking of the fish sticks thing in South Park anymore. Still bad. That was like 10 years I ago, know. and he's still with it's, it's so accurate that he has no self-awareness whatsoever, uh, and he's still doing it. I, I really hope the South Park guys have got another one in the chamber for Kanye West, because that, that yep. was so accurate. And I think it's time that they did another one, because he deserves it, because he's a twat. Have you noticed as well that rappers just seem to have stopped rapping? Yeah, he's now... A, There's not now much he's, rapping he's, on this, isn't He there? tries to sing with a lot of... Old, Auto tune on it, but he's been doing that for the last few records. I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I, I you think that sometimes he can use the voice quite effectively with all the effects on it. It's the lyrical content that I have more of a problem with. It's just the name you're talking about the sexism. A lot of sexism in hip hop is like retrospective. I listen to a lot of 90s stuff, and you go, Oh, you have to listen to it in spite of that, but you know that the artist themselves is no longer thinks that way. But with Kanye, it's not like you can't separate that you can't say oh well yeah but it's all right because he doesn't really believe that anymore no this he's making that he's making this music this year he's still stuck in the 90s uh, he wasn't even popular in the 90s so i don't know where he's got this from i was googling kanye west so what's, what's kanye been up to and then <laughs> i saw it's like something like someone said oh his newest girlfriend or partner or wife i don't know which what it is like she's gone home because he's possessive yeah and I was like, who is she? So I had a little look and let's be honest, she's, she is smoking hot. Mm. But it's just pictures of her dressed in literal nothing yeah. next to him wearing a bin bag, it seems, yeah. like in the name of fashion. And he, and she had to go home because he's being controlling. So this isn't like easy just rapping about bitches and hoes. This is an actual possessive mm. person yeah. singing about us. But I'd be like, okay, using his example, I'd be like the Nazis singing about horrific things towards Jewish people. Mm. It's just... It's not tongue in cheek. No. It's just, it is that. Yeah. And that's what makes it a bit more jarring. Yeah. Yeah. You can forgive somebody who does a cheeky joke that maybe doesn't come off very well or is mistimed or something like that. But this is his intent. He's, he's just straight up. I've read baby's first book on Adolf Hitler and now I think I'm cool. So I'm going to walk around and, and show off how much I fail to understand about world history. And because I'm really rich and famous, there's loads of dick riders that will support me in doing it and buy my records. The song is literally about dick riding like a carnival. Yeah. And it's funny because that's what the fans seem to be yeah. doing. And he's just, I mean, <laughs> the dick riding that he does is for Elon Musk, which he clearly needs his money because he's in a lot of trouble. It's basically the equivalent of a Facebook status, a vague shit posting up, hoping that Elon Musk will see it and go, you okay, hun? And he'll end up paying money for Kanye to get out of trouble. Oh, I'm yeah. going to be really pedantic. Like, I don't think carnivals have rides. Ride your dick like carnival. No. But carnivals don't have I mean, rides. That's They're more, more of a fairground. The, yeah, that's more of a fairground. Yeah. Carnivals just tend to have sideshows and Floats. elephants and yeah. that. Floats. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's really anal, but like no. I mean, when I first thought it, I was we, just like, we, carnivals don't have rides. Yeah. I mean <laughs> it doesn't make sense. If, if this was a good artist, I'd say no, that's far too nitpicky, Al. But no, this is Kanye West. Fuck him. <laughs> Get your events right, you dickhead. Yeah. yeah, ride your dick like a library. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Like, like, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm convinced as well, like these guys, like some of these rappers, they must be terrible in bed. Like just statistically, the amount they rap about like giving some mean dick and putting down a pasting. I mean, I mean, some of them must be premature ejaculated. I, mean, I don't know. Like it's just bollocks, isn't it? It's, this is actually, the, their lyrics, Gucci, how rich you are, riding dick. Yeah. That's literally the... The singer songwriter for mums equivalent of the list of what yeah. every artist does. Yeah, this is just, and that's it. just as calculated as all the uh, as the folk pop stuff. The difference is he's just not very 
consumable because he's so toxic in everything that he does. We need to, we need to redefine what rappers are as well. So I need to know now because the amount of songs that they call themselves rappers, but they don't rap. Yeah. Like, um, okay, like Post Malone, for example. Mm. He, according to his Wikipedia, he's a rapper. Mm. Have you ever heard him rap? I actually quite like yeah, it. Well, yeah, yeah, I like Post Malone. Um, Beer Bongs and Bentleys is a good album. I would say I would, I would classify a lot of that as rap. I like that. Uh, I like this first one, Rockstar. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Um, Beer Bongs and Bentleys is that. What's the, what's, that's a sweet one. What's that other song on it, which is his other single? We're like, I know I think that I am better now, better now. Uh, but yeah. I'm, Oh man, that song rules! I love it. It's great. I, love, so I'm a, I, I, I have no problem with trap music, and even even if Kanye wants to branch out and do trap music, fine. I, I will give him credit. He is one of the best hip hop producers of all time in terms of his early two thousand stuff and his late two thousand stuff. I love it. It's great, but the lyrics are crap. The the uh, the features don't do anything to help it. And quite frankly, like the, there's artists like Playboy Carti and that that, that are quite hot at the moment. But fuck you, if you're going to work with Kanye West and ignore all the fucking stupid shit that he says, then you fucking deserve a flop as well. I don't care. Gold digger. I hate that song. <laughs> that, was, that was like the first Kanye West song that I knew. And I really liked that song when I first heard it, but it was overplayed. But I can still listen to that now and separate the art from the artist and, and be like, yeah, I mean, that's a fine song. Anything. I mean, even up until Life of Pablo in 2016, which was what? Eight, eight years ago uh, some of the tracks on that no more parties in la i love that track with kendrick lamar but anymore no nah, no nah, he's just lost it for me i'm, I, I'm gonna give this one a thumbs yeah down. i'm, giving it, thumbs I'm down. giving it a strong thumbs down very strong thumbs down <laughs> we'll move on to one that i do really like though number seven a uh, single by another american pop star certainly not her first voyage into the uk charts it was the first single from the new album eternal sunshine it's been on the chart for 10 weeks. It peaked at number two. Last week it was number six, so it's sliding down. This is Ariana Grande with Yes And. It's a banger. I really like this one. I think it's uh, maybe my favourite Ariana Grande single. I really like Thank You Next. This is, for me, her catchiest song. I really like all the throwback references to 90s dance music. It's a little bit of a recall of Beyonce's Renaissance album, some of the other modern pop trends that are going on. And, and I encourage it because it's catchy. The message of it is self-empowerment, more power to Ariana Grande. And of the recent singles, this is one of the better ones. I quite like the sort of 90s feel this one gives. Yes. Like, is it 90s or early 2000s? I can't quite pick it's the uh, It's a it. 90s thing, I think. I knew the 80s were cool for a while, and now the 90s. And 90s cool. are cool. It's, Maybe it's 30 old years. Old baggy jeans are coming back. Yeah, it'll be yeah. new metal in the next sort of five years. A new metal will be back in a big way. Maybe we'll have rollerblades being fashionable again. <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're going <laughs> like, to you're gonna have your moment in the sun in the next few years when you're going to be like the elder statesman of cool that's coming. I'm not already that. I'd like to think. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, this, this song was okay. I found, I found the chorus very weak. Oh, I quite. Uh, I that was my. Re- I don't like the kind of vocal delivery. Like, she, she ha- It's just she has so understated and there, that is her rubbish. delivery. She's very much a sweet pop singer. But I, I think she's got incredible range. I like the ad libs at the end of the song. I think she's got a, a lot of talent. Reminds me quite a, a bit of the music that Mariah Carey was making back in the nineties, which I enjoyed. Pop R and B. There's no, not really any gimmicks to it. It is a dance floor filler, really. I like it. Uh, I can see what you mean though about the delivery. It is very. She's got this kind of angelic tone, which I think she uses quite effectively when sometimes she swears in this all over the place. Say, say that shit with your chest is in the chorus. She's kind of got a bit more of a bad girl image to her, but she has she hasn't changed the vocal style, which can be maybe a, a bit jarring. But this is my favorite. Going to these songs over a couple of weeks and listening to them uh, as a playlist and putting that playlist on repeat, this is the one I probably look forward to the most when it comes on. Okay. For me, to quote Lars Ulrich of the uh, Some Kind of Monster documentary, (laughs) it sounds stock to me. What don't you understand? It sounds stock to my ears. (laughs) That's what it is to me. I I found the verses for this one, it just sounded like any 90s song, like from a female artist. Which And it was fine. It wasn't bad. It was just... It felt like a dance floor filler from 15 years ago. Yeah. And I guess now we know it's cool again. It's, it's fair enough. It makes more sense. But I, it was okay. 
Like this would be a middle of the road song for me. I've never really liked a lot of her songs. Like, I've, I'm not offended by any of her music. It's fine. It's just there's something. There's no real hook there for me on this one. Mm. And I, I think it's the last chorus. You know, when the usual pop thing where like the last chorus, they pretty much copy and paste the chorus, but it is over you know, overlay her doing extra vocals yeah. to give it extra yeah, emphasis. Think, yeah. For me, it's even more jarring in this one because the chorus is so dull to me. Just having her going, oh, yeah. It doesn't add oomph to it. It's just fix the chorus and then you won't have to do that <laughs> shit. Like, I, I don't, it's okay. It's, it's, I, you know, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Oh. Thumbs down. Oh, he's a fuck. The first disagreement in the podcast. Oh, it's all down here. Yeah, I, I don't, just don't get this one. I may be wrong. If you're an Ariana Grande fan, good for you, but. I do not agree with you mm. on this one. Yeah. This, yeah. I'll this exactly call stuff. myself an Ariana Grande fan. I did listen to the album. Too late. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you are on now. Eternal Sunshine, I, it's like a 6 out of 10. It's all right. This is the best song on it. There's a couple of other singles uh, that I think she'll release. I do, um, there's another one that's in the in the chart. Spoiler alert. We'll get onto that in a bit. So this isn't the last time we'll talk about it. But the album is it's fine. Uh, it's better than Justin Timberlake's new album, but that's not hard. <laughs> we'll move on because uh, in sixth position in the UK chart this week is the song that held Ariana Grande off number one when it was at number two. And this one's been on the chart for 25 weeks, so quite a while. Uh, last week it was at number seven. It's gone back up, but it did peak at number one. This is Stick Season by Noah Khan. This is another American singer-songwriter, a folk song in the same way that Michael Markagi was. This one's been around for a lot longer, so I think it's permeated in my brain a little bit more. I've heard it on incidental music i think i've heard it on adverts maybe or something like that or continuity broadcast things i've heard it somewhere anyway i think todd in the shadows has been talking about noah khan a bit in his recent pop videos I love that guy. yeah he's, he's <laughs> great uh, and he loves his country music which is probably why he's a bit more into this than than i would normally be this one's not bad it's okay as far as folk singer songwriter songs go it's a lot better than the last yeah. one the, uh, and this is because you were saying earlier about how it's a bit boring how everyone's just so nice <laughs> being respectful is not how you want your your male singer songwriters to write their break up songs this one he seems like a bit more, bit more of a uh the lyrics he doesn't necessarily paint himself out to be a good guy it seems a little bit more honest melodically it, it's a lot catchier but this is a huge hit covered by olivia rodrigo on bbc one's live lounge and i think that's part of the reason why it's it's become such a big hit okay. and i don't really see it as being one of those songs that's a, a, a classic but it's fine it, 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 when you're talking about this genre of music, folk in the folk pop, it, it's certainly not even the worst example of it on this chart. I could, I could listen to this. I could, uh, if this came on, I wouldn't necessarily reach for the skip button. It's, it, it's okay, but yeah, like uh, having listened to it a few times, the first time I was like, Ugh. a couple more times, I get it. It's, I'm not act against this. So unfortunately, in my opinion of this, I really can just copy and paste. Yeah. Like it's month older. Mm -hmm. It's it's fine. Like I do. It felt a bit generic because this is the one with the lyrics where I drink alcohol until my friends come home for Christmas. Yeah, so, yeah. This is that one, isn't it? And even just the word "I drink alcohol," mm. just that alone felt generic to me. He couldn't even pick a. He couldn't even pick a favorite alcohol. Yeah. It's just I do. I smoke weed and drink alcohol, and it's probably my fault we broke up. Your mum doesn't remember me. It's, oh, come it, on. It's like, very much. Just have some character. Yeah. What? Just something that makes you different. Yeah. Like, then you're right. Smoking weed and drinking isn't, isn't like edgy. It's just whatever. So like, think of it like Guns N' Roses. They have a sort of night train because the alcohol they drank was just cheap night train. Mm. At least if you're going to make it personal, drink, make it more personal to what you like, got. Three like, hammers drink, or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I drank, you know, I got I passed out to drinking too many baby yeah. shams or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Tried to do the soccer this, Saturday drinking game to, with special brew and I passed out at halftime, you know? That, no, it. It's, it was just like, oh, what do you do when you're depressed? People tend to drink their sorrows away. Cool. So what, what do you drink? 
alcohol. <laughs> it gives me that kind of vibe. Do you remember that song a few years ago? Once I was seven years old. Don't I, you ever I, talk to me I, about I, that song. I, I, my girlfriend, yeah, I, Claire, I, every time it comes on, she actually says, don't say anything. Because yeah. I Lucas, rant about it so Lucas Graham, fucking hard. I, I think this is the time we get the rant out. It, because it... It reminds me, there's a bit in that song where he's singing about how he was like smoking at 11 or something like that. And I just, I instantly yeah. hear him and go, no, you aren't. I, I don't buy that from you. And it's the same with no, oh, Noah yeah, Khan yeah. saying alcohol. It just gives up that, you didn't really do that, did you? Because you've used the generic placeholder term. If you were really like experienced in that kind of shit, you'd know that nobody uses that kind of language. So it just no, it, it, is. it makes me think it's so inauthentic, just like that Lucas Graham song. I'm like, that's just a work of fiction that you've written to try and score as many points with as many per second moms as you can. It's forced relatability, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I hate that song, but oh God, I can go off this. Smoking hand road cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Everyone yeah. does. I mean, let's be honest, we're getting on a bit. The next, give it 10 years time, we like, smoke here, watermelon, mm. disposable V. Yeah. My dad used to drink. Do you remember when we were young and we'd have forms of rebellion? Yeah. They might as well sing like yeah. that. Because it's so generically trying to be related yeah. when it just isn't. And it's just like everyone, yeah, everyone did that stuff. It's not even edgy or something you can sing yeah, about. Like it's just, you might as well sing about, oh, you might as well sing about when I was six years yeah. old. I used to have to put on the pants Dad. on. Everyone did. One oh, years old and I didn't do my homework. Oh, 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 you rebels. We got drunk in the park because on, on. we were too young to yeah. drunk, drink in the bars. Like, it's just complete shit. Yeah. And I don't, well, yeah, he might have done all of that. But guess what? It's not worth writing a song about it because no one gives a fuck. Mm -hmm. I hate that song so much. And I was in the charts. For so oh, long, no. I'm still on the radio now. Yeah, I haven't forgiven the British public for that. That was a hit worldwide as well. Mum oh, God, that. I hate that Classic record. It's one yeah. of the worst songs ever, and I, I think we can agree on that. Yes. But I, I, this isn't one of the worst songs ever. I don't hate it as much as that song, certainly. But um, No, I, it's, in the, it's, the, it's of the same ilk, but the song itself is just better. He's got a better voice. So, I think the voice you know, carries yeah, he's it got a better voice. On, the, on, on this. I think he's got a really good vocal and that's why i give him a little bit more of a pass than i would lots of artists in this genre because yeah it's not unpleasant to listen to i don't think that he's completely unbearable in the personality that he tries to convey on the record so no it's not exactly a thumbs up but it's a, a numb thumb Num yeah. That's a num a num thumb. there we go <laughs> well, making so this shit up, go mean... along can you tell <laughs> I appreciate Noah can probably write a good song, but unless he's like start making it actually relatable rather than just generic what we think would relate be relatable. I feel like a lot of them are written by me. Yeah. I, it's yeah. just it's forced edginess where there isn't any. It's just boring. Yeah. I mean that Ariana Grande, that last song, one of the reasons why I like it so much is probably because it was written co written with Max Martin, who did a lot of stuff that, well, over the last thirty years. He worked with the Backstreet Boys, he's worked with the weekend, he's worked with Childish Gambino, he's worked with so many people and that's one of the reasons i like it and a lot of these songs when i listen to modern pop music i always look at the songwriters and go oh that's why i quite like this song because it has somebody salsa mande who was involved in the ariana grande track as well he's also written for charlie xx lightning he was co he co-wrote that that's a banger so there are certain pop songwriters who you can go to will churn out something decent but when it comes to the singer songwriter stuff it, it just seems to me like the Sometimes you can have too many people and it just makes it come up, come across as stale. It's because they like, okay, singer songwriters, let's say like Bob Dylan, right? Yeah. He's on the most, a lot of these guys would probably absolutely worship Bob Dylan, for example. Yeah. He had a message, like he had a strong opinion on like the Vietnam War and mm -hmm. stuff. Like he had, or like sing about, if you're going to be sing about depression, sing about the depths, how low you've been, or mm -hmm. like sing about an opinion you have, put yourself, put your opinions on the line a bit, mm -hmm. but just to be going, yeah, I got depressed, so I drank. Or I got depressed, so I drove past your house and looked through your window or mm. some really weird. Just it's it's the whole point of the genre is that you have an opinion or an emotion you want to sing about, but it just doesn't translate at all. It's just so generically boring. Yeah. Where I just don't believe they have I don't think he's ever been dumped. Mm. I don't think he's I'd like that's what it gets that's what it gets like to me, where 
it's if you got a 10 year old to write a song like this, they'd, these are the sort of lyrics that would come out. Maybe I'm being really hard on him because you know, I think the song is. All yeah, right. no, I can't write this by himself. It was co produced with Gabe Simon, but it was written by one person. So maybe that's why I like this a little bit more than the other songs in the genre. But I, I, I think, yeah, you, you're right. It, it doesn't, it's still not quite there. It's still not quite that authentic in terms of the lyrics. It's certainly not the, the, protest songs of the of bob dylan um that's for sure but i mean it's a step in the right direction i guess it's one one person with a good voice who's written a song just wet blanket music yeah. that's what it is he's a wet blanket with an acoustic guitar and that's all i need yeah. to do. I've, i have no time for wet blankets <laughs> <laughs> next so in fifth position old backstory to this one because this is artist joe spelled d j o and the song is called end of beginning d it's been on the chart for six weeks. It picked the number four. It's been hanging around in the middle of the top ten. And it's actually by the guy who plays Steve Harrington in Stranger Things, actor Joe Joe Keery. So he's doing music as well. This isn't that bad. Oh, no. I know I know this. For somebody who is an actor on a popular show, that can be a surefire big red flag when it comes to music, when you've got somebody who is in the public conscious that's making music on top of their day job as well. But it would appear that Joe Keery is fairly competent at making music. It's a bit of an indie pop tune. It's got decent verse, decent chorus. It's quite likable. I, I think I'd give this a, a thumbs up. I'm literally just quickly Googling where uh, <laughs> Steve from Stranger Things is. He's, he's, uh, is he the older guy? Yeah, he's like he? the jock character. I've only seen the first season. Oh, oh, this yes, is one yes. of the, that it's one of those shows where everybody told me, because it's 80s, aesthetic based uh, everybody said damn you'll love stranger things because it's the 80s and I, and I watched it and i thought it's two 80s <laughs> which sounds really antithetical to why i wouldn't why i would dislike it but it's because it, it seems to just rely on it being an 80s nostalgia show the, the plot points and that didn't really grip me that much i'll be honest i quite like stranger things there's one thing i did like this song mm. yeah so I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for palm muting yeah just the verses, din, 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 din. Like, I did just quite like this one. It's not incredible, no. but I did like it. It reminds me of, I'm not sure, this reminds me of a pre-Echo Park feeder. Yeah. So, yeah, the four Buck Rogers. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. A little bit less upbeat, but with synths in it, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it was so, a bit more like indie, cool. wasn't it, to, to, to start? Yeah, almost a slower sort of Jimmy Eat World almost song like, that you'd get almost, on. Like, uh, you know, like a less refined version of Death Cab for Cutie or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one of those ones where when I listen to the playlist, I would I would smile when this came on. I think it's probably because it's a bit closer to my person, like my genres I enjoy, mm -hmm. but I'm quite surprised it's actually in the top yeah, 10. I didn't too. think this would. Me too. Do you his name value maybe? I, mean, I or, was trying to like, figure that out. I couldn't work it out because I'm like, he's not really a big star. I didn't know who he was. And it, it's not like the world's got Joe Keery fever where he's everywhere. I I think I made the mistake of reading that before I listened to the song because I went in expecting it to be, oh no, this is like when Lindsay Lohan had a music career. This is going to be bottom of the barrel. He's only got a, a song in the charts because he's famous. And I listened to it and went, oh, this has got a lot more to it than I thought. And it's got guitar on it. It's one of the only tracks on the top 10 that has both drums and a guitar. Hey, the Kanye song had a bit of a guitar. <laughs> Let's not talk about Kanye anymore. Can I not? Can I just not talk about Kanye anymore for at least like two months? Uh, but yeah, the, this is probably the, the closest to a rock track on the top 10. Take that with a yeah. pinch of salt because it's not a rock tune. If you're expecting fucking Cannibal Corpse, it's, it's not that. But it's likable. It's enjoyable. I, I might check out the album to see if it's, to see if there are. Any yeah, actually, it. now you say that, I'm. I, yeah, like you say that, I would have I would have. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll make it a go. It's, it's good enough. It reminds me a bit of Alex G that was talked about on the podcast a couple of years ago, like indie pop singer-songwriter with other elements to it. This isn't as maybe intricate as that. It's a bit more pop orientated, but this is just the single, so there might be other stuff on the album. But yeah, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I'm going to give this one a thumbs up. It's like the most 7 out of 10 song I can think of. Right? Yeah. It's, it's winner of the most... 7 out of 10 sounding track of 2024 so far. Uh, there, you, there you go. You can add that to your list of accolades, Joe Curie. 
We're moving now into the dizzy heights of the chart. Up next is number four from another American act, US singer-songwriter Teddy Swims. Uh, and this is the song Lose Control, which is kind of a uh, R&B country blues soul record. It's a bit old school. A white guy with tattoos. I thought he was a black guy until I give him a... He's one of those, yeah. It's like Rag and Bone Man. It's like that kind of thing where his appearance doesn't match the voice. Much like Rick Astley pioneered back in the day. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, this is Rick Astley. Exactly like that, yes. This is Rick Astley, (laughs) the sequel, (laughs) Teddy Swim. He's got a lot more tattoos than Rick Astley. But this has been around for a while. Been on the chart for 20 weeks. Peaked at number two. I didn't really go for Rag and Bone Man very much. It, It seemed a bit performative in the way that he would use his image to distract from the the voice but i just found the the music was quite generic whereas this lose control i think there's a bit more to this song every time i hear it i enjoy it more i like soul funk and soul music that's my bread and butter and this is quite good Uh, it's not amazing it grows on me and it's soulful it's got that big kind of gospel feel to it it's not overproduced. It, the production on it is actually quite nice. I think I need to check out the album this is from, the, which is called I've Tried Everything But Therapy Part One. Not my favorite album title in the world, but you know, it might be quite good. So I'll, I can't judge it without, without listening to it. Al, what, what, what are you thinking on, on Teddy Swims? The guy's got a voice, doesn't yeah. he? He's, he's got a very strong voice. Yeah. I'm actually quite surprised. I thought, when I heard this, I thought, oh, I we'll love this one. I, I thought this was going to be your favorite in the top 10, mm-hmm. to be honest. Mm-hmm. But I, I think. Unfortunately, like gospel style singing is a bit of a, a unknown area to me. So I, I guess I go, oh, we're talking about this sort of music. He'll like it. And I don't know the minutiae between them. But yeah, I just think this is just a good song. The guy can sing. Yeah. It's it's soulful in a way I personally believed. And the, the chorus is pretty good. It's hard to even talk about this one because it's just... It's just quite good. Isn't it? so, <laughs> yeah, it's quite similar to the last one, really. In the in the is positive, not really anything to moan about with it, and I'll probably will check out the artist a little bit more. But yeah, what else do you say? <laughs> it's yeah, it's a soulful one. One thing I actually did think when I was listening to it, actually, I think it's because of the previous podcast, I guess. But I think this could be a quite a good Bond song. Yes, yeah, I, I agree with you. I didn't think of that until you've just said it. But as soon as you said it. Yeah, it, it's. I can imagine seeing the opening credits of this play. Yeah, it's that perfect sort of subtlety, but I don't know. I, it's hard to describe a Bond theme other than it's. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, but. this wouldn't be out of place on like Casino Royale or Quantum of Solace, the two thousands one. No, yeah, like a newer Bond music. This, I think, this would have made a really good Bond. Yeah, this, Bond, this, uh, this if you're a fan of Chris Cornell. I think that this kind of thing is probably up your street. I know you're not actually a fan of Chris Cornell. I just don't like Soundgarden that much. Yeah. And Audio Sleeper is a bit wanky. But yeah, I mean, this, his worse. solo stuff, this is more more in line with, with his solo stuff. There's no rock instrumentation of, of a Soundgarden album, but if you like Chris Cornell's mm-hmm. voice and what he brings to the table vocally, or somebody like Marcus King, who's a really good American artist that I've been following recently, and as I mentioned before, Rag and Bone Man, there seems to be a, a market for white soul singers at the moment that do sound authentic. There is, he, he seems to know his way around a, a soul record it doesn't come across as some some soul records and you, uh, give me the ick when I'll, I'll listen to a soul record and it, it it sounds clearly like somebody who doesn't really know the genre and is doing an impression of what they think a soul singer would do. This doesn't come across like that for me. Mm, it, it comes across like he knows his. I might be wrong. He might not know anything about soul music, but he, he's he's at least fooled me with this. If it is, is a trick, well done, Mister Swims. You've 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 pulled off a good one. And if not, then. Yeah, I'm gonna give you. I'm also gonna give you two thumbs up for this one. Good it's song. a double thumber. This one. Well, yeah, I might, I might change the, the name of that. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll, 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 move, we'll move on. This is going to be one of your favourites. Out in third place. So she needs no introduction, really. Six weeks on the chart. Pick the number one. This is her first week not on number one. It's Texas Hold'em by Beyonce. Oh, I'll let you go first on this. I'm gonna have to clarify. I I don't like Beyonce. Yes, I, know, I think I have not yeah. liked. I've never liked one song she's ever written or been in. I don't like any Destiny's Child. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And of all of her songs, this is my least favorite she's ever done. <laughs> so I don't want to be too scathing or too ranty about this. I had to, I had to go on Wikipedia to actually 
Because at first, it See, felt so generically... Wow. <laughs> I, I, had, I had to Wikipedia this one because it's because this sounded so generically trying to appeal to Southern people in America, and it felt so generically, yeah, baby. Well, oh, no, that was a terrible thing. Um, it's hard to put the words why I hate this. Other than it felt like the most pandering sort of country style music that anyone could ever do to pander to that demographic. It wasn't a good version of any sort of country dancing music. I actually had to Google where she was from. And then when I saw she was actually from Texas, mm -hmm. I was genuinely surprised yeah. because anything else in her imagery up to this point has completely been not, I'm from Texas. It's almost like she's done a, she's a callback to her roots yeah. just to sell CDs there. But, this is so bad. Like, let's be honest. She's not that good a singer. Can we just say oh, it? Like, no, I'm not. not, not, not I'm not going to agree with you on oh, that. No. Yeah. She goes, ooh, ooh, in that yeah. bit. Like, they got the backing vocals coming in. I was like, what was that? <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, this is shit. <laughs> this, I don't, I, it's hard for me to put into words how much I hate this song. It's just pandering shit. And it's the, it's the equivalent of, you know, when um, Kid Rock did that. What's that song with the... Um, American Banner. He did the... Um, the no, the, the, the backing music was Let It Skin. Oh, oh, All Summer Long. Yeah. This is Beyonce's version of oh, that. Oh, no. Where it's just panda to, oh, I'll, I'll make one. This, I'll sell it in the South for a bit. This will do. And it was crap. I fucking queen B, queen shit. <laughs> I fucking hate it. <laughs> I can't stand Beyonce. Absolutely. She is one of those people where the songs aren't justifying why she's here. Her name value is. And that's all it is. That's all she will ever be to me. She's famous for being a famous artist. And that's all it ever be to me. I think she's fucking shit. Go on. Now, now, now tell me how much you enjoyed this song and how brave it was of uh, her to mix up the music. And it's not, I, I'm yeah. not going to go too far with it. This is not in the upper echelon of Beyonce singles. I don't mind it. Because it's catchy and it, it, it achieves its purpose as a pop song. It, it does feel a bit jarring that she suddenly turned to country, but I'm aware of the fact that she's from Texas. It's her heritage as well, so she's just as entitled to do country music as anybody else. And I think the other song, 16 Carriages, because there's two, two singles, uh, that's much better. I think this one is, as you say, a little bit pandering to the Yas Queen but country mum kind of vibe. Um, and it is designed to be popular on TikTok off of the millions of people that buy fucking Garth Brooks records. It's by committee. It's basically they got around the table and I don't think she's down enough for the yeah. kids to make a, like, to do this genre. So what are we going to do? Let's, if she can't appeal to the kids anymore because she's in her 50s, <laughs> let's make her appeal to Southern mums. And yeah, that's Yeah, I, 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 get, I do get that. But I, I mean, I have a lot more respect for Beyonce than you do, I think. It, we had this conversation 10 years ago. I'd probably agree with you 100%. But after a self-titled album came out in 2013 and Lemonade in 2016, and I actually really like the Renaissance album as well, I think that she's got more to her as an artist and I can see her drive and that she is the reason why a lot of this stuff happens. Uh, she's quite savvy uh she does get involved in a lot of the the, the songwriting process and, and, and especially on the last few albums i mean on this particular track that's not really anything to shout about and this is another song by committee again this is i mean it's a six and a half out of ten for me it's not amazing but it's not one of my favorites on this list but i can't i, I just I quite like Beyonce and it, it actually gives me a sense of satisfaction watching people go, well, she's not allowed to do country music. Why? Because uh, she's not from that. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Makes me think, oh, so you're not. I owe it. I, I thought that. I took yeah, that. it, it <laughs> kind of gives me that. Oh, so you there's a little bit of uh, white supremacy vibes coming off of people when they say <laughs> that. And I. Oh, oh Bo, no, it's not. That'd be like if Jay Z did a country album. There would be a part of me with a bit. I mean, I'd have. <laughs> He's allowed to, but you'd be like, why is he doing that? But it? I mean, I'd have to listen to it first. I don't think Jay Z's country album would sound as pop friendly as Beyonce so I think she can get away with it because she's not trying to make old country it's not like she's made a Red House Painters album she stuck to her lane in terms of pop music and it's accessible and it's not it is nice to hear her do something that has mainstream appeal because her last few records she's been not really promoting stuff and it but it, it, it it's just been really popular but she's not really made it's not been singles she's done her own thing put it out there and let her popularity take it to the charts without 
doing the 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 kind of promo stuff um uh, so it's nice to see the traditional kind of album cycle for beyonce with a couple of pop singles and that it's not groundbreaking and if the album is all country it's probably not going to be any better than her first four records that she, she put out it doesn't bode particularly well in terms of excitement for new beyonce music but i'll give it a listen i always listen to her albums this is not the uh, a shining star from in beyonce's di- discography but i don't hate it i think the song is genuinely shit <laughs> i absolutely like I, i'm gonna give this on a bit of a doubt it's crap sorry i just Really I mean, I don't it. love it enough to defend it from you. It's not something I'm not going to go. There won't be another cook off in the sessions goes pop because I was wrong. I mean, it, it's it's fine. It's not, <laughs> it's not spectacular. We move on to second place. Yes. In second place, another appearance from Ariana Grande. This one is We Can't Be Friends, Wait For Your Love. The second week on the chart, so this is the newer single. It's peaked at number two, highest entry last week. But I don't really understand why because I don't really like this song. The last Ariana Grande song, Yes And, was a banger. This one, I just think is very derivative of Robin's song Dancing on My Own from 2010, which is a much, much, much better song. Yes And was kind of reminiscent of 90s dance tunes. This one's another callback to older pop music, but it's just not as good or catchy or memorable. So yeah, I, I'm not really a fan of this one. I'm going to quickly listen to this one because I've completely forgotten how this one goes. <laughs> Of course, you can listen along at cacophonysessions.com, where all the playlists are on Apple Music and Spotify. This would be a perfect time to pause. A few moments later. Right, I wrote this one. Yeah, Yeah, it's okay. I actually prefer it to the other song. A lot more, to be honest. I don't think it's very good. As As I've now been told, this seems to be her style of singing. Yeah. Which I'm just not... I'm not really a fan of any one of the kind of this... Where... Singing, yeah, the, the kind of big, yeah, like, the 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 more hushed tones, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I've never been a huge fan. I think if you're gonna sing, bloody belt it, yeah. But it's all right. It's not bad. I I do prefer this one to the other one. I think the the chorus is a bit stronger. Mm. Like I think I just I just prefer the music in general. It's really it's quite similar for me in feel to the last yeah, one, it is. where like my opinions are copy and paste. Where what I dislike and like but Ariana Grande are the same. Mm. I just think this is just a slightly stronger song. Mm. I imagine I assume this is on the same album yeah. because that's why she's got two in the charts. Yeah, it's, um, it's just fine. It's inoffensive to me. I have a really hard time talking about it. Well, I, to be honest, it's, yeah. <laughs> I sent it's it's so stuck to my ears. <laughs> Thanks, Lars. <laughs> the main thing that struck me about this song when I first heard it, I do really like that Robin song that I mentioned, Dancing on My Own. And it's so remarkably similar that it is it instantly reminded me of that song but not as good which is why i can't like it because Mm. if i want to listen to that song done well i'll listen to the robin tune and i'm sure it's intentional much like the 90s callback stuff in the other single is so i'm sure that the production because again this is another team i think it's the same team but they it's very much like they've done that deliberately but if you're gonna do an interpolation of a song like that, make sure that you're bringing something different and something maybe better to the table to justify doing it. In mm. this case, I also heard Robin dancing on my own. I also like that song. And I will also continue to like that song, but not remember this one. Sorry, Anne. Artist over song again. Another one. If you were to, if this was an unheard of artist, oh, yeah. this would never make no, it. No, no, you're right. And I find this with a few of these songs where the, the songs just aren't, strong enough to be what the 10 best songs in the globe on the globe right now in the uk this is number two like in the uk but, and this is number two really <laughs> like, it's all right it's not there's no um for anything there's no there's nothing that gives you as my brother would say nothing that gives you a buzz <laughs> there's no buzz in yeah. it you know yeah it's fine like I, I don't dislike or hate it or anything i don't i just don't love it i would never choose to listen to mm. this it's yeah, yeah, I mean, like, even I, I, I got right. the, yeah, I got, I'm going to give it a numb thumb as well. This one, I think, it's not I don't numb dislike thumb. it enough, and I, I quite like Ariana Grande as a pop star. I think she's a, a positive force in the world of pop, but that's just my tastes. Uh, just while we're looking before we get to number one, because all the songs are new, which is nice because. In previous charts, mm. there's been like track. I'm so glad Harry Styles isn't still on the chart. If he was still there, <laughs> <laughs> we would have had problems. 20 
five weeks is the longest on the chart. So at least all these songs are coming out now. There was, if we'd done this last week, the Taylor Swift song, Cool Summer, is from a, an album that came out five years ago and is not her most recent album. So the charts can do some weird shit where songs, Kate Bush is running up that hill from Hounds of Love from 1985 was a big charting single last year. So the charts are doing some very, very strange things, stranger things. Thanks, Joe. And it's nice to see that these are just singles that are out currently that are popular. They might not be the best songs, as we've just identified, but at least they are the current songs that are out. Um, and I'm just pretty stoked that Drake is in there. Oh, he, he like every, there. every time we've done one of these, yep. we have had a lot of Drake, I, and I'm just happy he's between so, albums. Well, you say that, but I had a look at the UK Top 40 and he released a single last week where he's a featured artist on Four Bats' single, Act 2, Data 8. And I w it was almost like they released that specifically because they knew you were going to be listening to the chart again, but it didn't make the top 10. In fact, it's, uh, dropped, oh, it's fuck. dropped to number 22 this week. It got to number 18 last week. So maybe the Drake effect isn't quite working so much. But yeah, That'd be amazing. there are some weird songs that have been out for years, I mean, decades, outside the top 10, though, because at number 12 is Unwritten by Natasha Benningfield. So it seems that songs that can, become, can go viral on TikTok are now eligible to just be chart successes again. All it takes is for a show on Netflix yeah. to have a song in the, in the theme music and it's back yeah. in. Uh, and it, just the charts are not really fit for purpose fine. anymore because it's easy to draw attention to one song that isn't even really a single and then just make it number one. The whole chart is the Rage Against the Machine versus X Factor thing all the time now. We'll just, mm -hmm. we'll just make, I don't know, Ernie the fastest milkman in the West number one for a laugh. And yeah, that's it then. Uh, it just seems a bit weird. At least it makes it more interesting for us every now and again. Have a that, that's very one. true. Yeah. We are going to be doing this more regularly. Uh, so you'll will no doubt be sick and tired of talking about the same 10 artists and we will welcome when they decide to resurrect a long forgotten tune. But we'll finish up with this uh, with the number one because uh, I'm sure you're all dying to hear what got to number one. Uh, oh, my drum roll. What is <laughs> oh, it? Uh, it's been on the charts for nine weeks and last week it was number two so I didn't think we'd have to talk about it as a number one but it's made it. It released on the record uh, label of Imagine Dragons frontman Dan Reynolds which is never a good sign. It gained popularity on TikTok through multiple teasers of course. Um, but this is Beautiful Things by Benson Boone. He's an American singer -songwriter from Monroe, Washington and this is his first UK number one. I quite like this. It's more singer-songwriter, but this time it, it, there's a bit more rock to it. Vocal styling-wise, a bit more of Jeff Buckley, that sort of singer-songwriter 90s alt-rock material. Yeah, no, I see that. I, I don't yeah, miss he, that. He, um, yeah, yeah, he's got a good yeah, voice. I, was, I, I did know. like his voice. Mm. Um, I found... I, I like the... My favourite part of the song is to build up to the chorus, mm. weirdly. Yeah. I think that was done rather well. I'm just looking at my notes because I've already forgot half forgotten what this guy sounds like. <laughs> I also, but I did find his voice to be a little shrill in the chorus. Yeah. Just a little bit. But other than that, it, it's fine. It's like you say, a singer songwriter, but I think it's probably my second favorite singer songwriter mm. song on the top 10. Yeah. It's usual mum fodder. It's got a bit more to it than, but it's fine. You probably already heard it because it's number one. Um, in fact, you probably heard it more than I have because I don't go outside uh, and or listen to the radio. So my, my exposure to these kind of things is very much limited. I'm in a, a, the fortunate enough position where I'm not subjected to other people's music anymore. So I don't really, if I'm in the shop, I've usually got headphones on, so I don't get subjected to that. Apart from the Tesco in Edmonton Street in Plymouth, because they play fucking bangers all the time. So whoever you are <laughs> that, that runs the playlist in Tesco Edmonton Street in Plymouth, <laughs> shout out. fucking shout out to you because it's quality every time. They were playing some Isley Jasper Isley the other day and it was, I was like, yes, nobody plays this. But yeah, I don't really get subjected to other people's music anymore. So I'm not, maybe there is, there are people out there saying, oh God, not fucking Benson Boone again. But I mean, I haven't <laughs> heard it like that. I thought it was okay. It's, it reminded me a little bit of Jeff Buckley. He's only 21 and it is a, uh, it's also co-written with Jack LaFrance and Evan Blair. But it is a team on this one. And I think maybe the immaturity of somebody being 21 and being the face of this song, I think maybe that's where the, the, the vocal inexperience comes through and it does sound a bit too sharp or a bit too uh, shrill, as you said, on, on the chorus. I think maybe that 
as he gets a more experienced vocalist, his, his, his music will get better in that sense. So, I mean, it's a good starting point. Again, it's not... Yeah, I want to clarify, that is just nitpicky. He has got an incredible yeah, voice. Yeah. He's got a good yeah. voice. As we've said with so many of these singer-songwriter songs, they're not really my thing. So, will I listen to this album? Yeah. Probably not. If, it may be a situation where this song gets played all the time, and I do hear it again, but... At this point in time, if we don't do another one of these for a few weeks, and if it's not in the top 10 anymore, I'm probably never going to hear it again. Um, doesn't make me sad, but it also doesn't make me happy either. I'm going to give it, I'm not giving it two thumbs up, but it'll get a solitary thumbs up from me, this one. I'm giving it a thumbs up. Here's thumb. a num We've got a lot of num thumbs this week. Yeah, thing. a lot of num thumbs. I imagine going forward of this this branch of the Cacophony Sessions podcast is a lot of num yeah, thumbs. Yeah, we're going to be sat on a house. There's so much music, isn't there, where... It's not really our genre, and we can't really say anything negative about it because it's objectively not that bad, mm. but it's also something we can't really put our full endorsement behind, and this is what it yeah. means. But good for him. He's 22, and he's got a number one single. Get on, Yeah, man. more than I've done. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can play too yeah. much. He must be doing something yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he doesn't have a YouTube channel with over 800 subscribers on it. You know, not everyone can do that. Uh, <laughs> may have to change that next, <laughs> next month, but we'll see. Uh, on that note, like and subscribe. I need Al to write a new sign ne for the next episode. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be a little bit depressed inside. We're going to be doing this more often. It won't be once a year we listen to the chart and then come back to it next year. Um, we'll try and keep this up every month or so to at least see what's going on in the charts. Might venture around the world a little bit, as you know, and do the American chart. Oh, yeah. you might get some guests on, some people that you've seen in the history of the Cacophony Sessions podcast and some other people that I've been talking to as well. Maybe we'll get Dr. F*** on and do the American chart. We hope you've been, enjoyed this endeavour into the chart. Al, is there any final thoughts you would like to leave the viewers with? Yeah, th this has been fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this going yeah. forward. As you said, I think, I'm not sure how often we will do it just because we need to refresh the, the chart. I'm not, we can't talk about yeah. Teddy swims. Yes. The next, yeah, we got there every week weeks. because we were going to originally do this last Saturday. I wasn't feeling particularly well, so we're doing it this week. And the chart has only changed by one song. So that doesn't bode well if we're looking to do it every week because it will just be, oh, so let's talk about the same 10 songs that we talked about with, with minimal detail last week. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll, we'll keep it fresh and we will try and come back to it when there's maybe when there's been significant changes of what, every six weeks or so, uh, just so you don't get bored. And I'm sure I'll still be as punchable as ever. So you'll have that to look forward to. Al, I'm sure you can find new ways to keep people's lines. And you know, <laughs> before we can sign off, I think we should do two shout outs. Yeah, the one is for Fry. And Martin, Tom and Ryan. their band Four of Voices, Voices, they're doing a lot of tour dates this year. They are. Go on their Facebook and uh, give that a look. Yep. And uh, if you're interested in, in anything I'm doing musically, I've got a band at the moment called Why Lizards Why. Yeah. There's a comma between the Why Important. Lizards and then comma Why on Facebook. We haven't got any recorded music, but we have two band practice songs up on there. So if you actually are intrigued about my musical level and the music that I tend to be playing at the moment, then you can slag off my shit as much as I slag off other people's feel free and subscribe to the podcast of course yeah let's get ready yeah. I, I, I'm i not making any music so people don't need to worry about that I'm not, I'm, I'm fully in, in musical retirement but do check out the other videos on the channel there'll be a, another video coming soon in which I'm going to be talking about the 20th anniversary of Musicology which was the first Prince album I actually bought and Dr Funk's going to come on the channel and we're going to do a review of that coming soon as well Dan Splaining in which me and Dan B will be talking about a topic we know nothing about and pretending we're experts because that's what mansplaining is and we are Den <laughs> Me and Tom do cat news, so the latest one of those is up as well, in which I rant about Kanye West. Tom talks about how good Prince's Super Bowl show was, and we run through the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees, but forget to do Lenny Kravitz. But thanks very much for tuning in. This has been the Cacophony Sessions Goes Pop. I'll look at the top 10. Make sure you check out cacophonysessions.com for all things cacophonous. Have a good one. Make sure, of course, you stay funky. We gotta work our side now. Ciao! <laughs> Stay fucking! <laughs> chart music! Chart music! Oh, hey. <laughs> that bit is being edited out. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs>